Welcome to How the Song Came to Be, where soulful songwriters share the stories behind their songs, as well as tools and creative practices you can use to bring your best songs or other creative works to life. I'm Ann Heaton, your host. It just, it just, it fell out of me, completely fell out of me as soon as I, as I gave myself permission to really write the letter that needed to be written, which was a letter saying how much I miss him and how much I love him, but how I really need to be released. I want, I want out of the relationship. <laughs> Welcome songwriters. I'm Ann Heaton, your host and founder of Soul Songs. Our guest today is singer-songwriter Sloane Wainwright. Sloane defies categorization with her easy command of pop, folk, jazz, and blues, held together by her rich contralto voice, the end result being a unique and soulful hybrid. Very true. Sloan's family tree, brother and folk music luminary Loudon Wainwright, nephew Rufus Wainwright, nieces Martha Wainwright, and Lucy Wainwright Roche reads like a who's who of contemporary folk music. Sloan's <clears throat> incredible gift is not only her unique songwriting ability, but also her dramatically voiced rendition of original songs. Sloan has released 10 original CDs. She's won <clears throat> two songwriting awards at the annual M Power Posey Music Awards as well as written numeral, numerous musical compositions for theater and dance. Sloan is also an incredible vocal and songwriting teacher, offering her gifts at places such as Richard Thompson's Frets and Refrains, the Swananoa Gathering, Summer Songs, WUMB Radio's Summer Acoustic Music Week, and many others. Sloan, I am so happy that you're here. <laughs> I am. How Thank are you? you. Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm doing good. Happy to good. be here with you, my friend Ann Heaton. Oh, my friend Sloan Wainwright. Awesome. So would you be willing to, to start us off with a song? Sure. I will do my best. <coughs> On my little ukulele here. Awesome. <coughs> Time to write this letter. I think I'm getting better. So the words they want to come. I miss you. I miss our life together. What happened to forever? You were my only one. I know you're gone. You're not coming back. Whoa. I'm letting go. I'm ready to leave without dear joy. It hasn't all been easy, but I've been keeping busy making all the light. You are an angel. The perfect work to do. I am releasing you so we can both move on. I know you're gone, you're not coming back. I'm letting go, I'm ready to leave with that dear George. Our love is everlasting. It's your blessing I am asking for. While I open up my heart to another companion, friend, and lover. Something different, something other. Someone who isn't you. I know you're gone. You're not coming back. Yeah. I'm letting go. I'm ready to leave without dear George. Dear George. Dear George. Woo. Oh. Made it through, wow. could barely, barely, barely do that G chord. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm just, I feel like I'm going to gush the whole time. So, uh, wow, that is so beautiful. And 
you know, normally I jump into ans asking you the standard question, but I have to ask you, uh, are, can you talk about that song and, and, Absolutely. and how Absolutely. it's to be? Okay. Absolutely. And I'm so happy to be here with you, Ann. And I think I really want to hear about and know more about your soul songs school. Um, which just absolutely screams out to me, come hang out, you know. I know, I know. Uh, and so in thinking about our time together and thinking about songwriting, and, and I feel so very grateful because so much of my work includes mentoring uh, other folks around singing, songwriting, and performing. So for the last, believe it or not, like 24 years, I've been able to mentor others around the energy of songwriting. Now this song, Dear George, is a song that um, came from a workshop that I was facilitating, a workshop that I've been doing for many years called Swimming in the River of Your Song, which is a creative process uh, workshop where folks who just are interested in words and music and putting them together uh, we play around with fun writing exercises and uh, games and stuff like that. And this song came from a prompt of uh, write the letter that needs to be written or write mm. the letter that want that wants to be written. And um, so this is a letter that I wrote to my husband, George, who died almost eight and a half years ago. Now he died in uh, December of 2008. Wow. And, um, yeah, so this is a song that I wrote a couple of years ago and it, and it was, it's really been great for me. Uh, it was, it was a wonderful breakthrough for me at the time that I wrote it because, uh, it just, it just, it fell out of me, completely fell out of me as soon as I, as I gave myself permission to really write the letter that needed to be written, which was a letter saying how much I miss him and how much I love him, but how I really need to be released. I want I want out of the relationship. <laughs> it's time for me to move on. Right. You know, because moving on is hard. Uh, it's been very, it's been a very, it's a long process. So this song has been very energetically has been a, a huge part of my journey and has helped me a lot with my grief. Wow. So that's amazing. Do you feel like the song itself kind of was a vehicle or helped you cross that threshold? Like yes. that actually, and that performing it live also remind, you know, is part of the letting go. Yeah, it's, 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 and I don't do it that much right now, but when I first wrote it a couple of years ago, I performed it all the time and it was very helpful. It was, it really helped me you know, continue to move forward and take, take important steps around letting go and creating a new life for myself. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that synergy between like songwriting and our lives, you know, like how the song can, like you say, you wrote the song and then it helped you take other steps in your life that you needed to take. Yes, oh. it did. It, it has. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, it, it, yes. So it was, it was, it was a, it's a song that actually energetically has helped me tumble forward, you know? Yeah. It has, it has a forward motion. I love that. It's like songs can be like our soul companions or like our friends that help Absolutely. us go in the right, the right direction for us. Um, and it's funny because when I perform it at first, it was sad. Yeah. And it's not, for me, it's not as sad at all and it's interesting one of the reasons why i don't perform it as much is because sometimes i'm not too sure how to um you know intro it you know sometimes i'll try to be very light about it but i don't want to land a bomb on people right because it can really turn the energy upside down in a room because yeah. i try to allow people to bring their take what they want from the song right and and you know go wherever it is that they want to go and for and it can be quite painful for, right you know, for people who are dealing with loss and letting go for me i'm not it doesn't make me that sad anymore yeah 
Well, you know, it's like, I know, I knew what the song was about just because I know your husband was George, but I, for some reason, it did the music or something, or maybe the way you perform, it didn't feel heavy. You know what I mean? It didn't feel, it felt like loving. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is loving. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. So, oh, and one little quick craft question. So that's like a prompt that you give to write. I've given a similar prompt, like write a letter to someone, you know, a living or dead, you know, but, but, um, I love the way you phrase that, like write the letter that needs to be written. You know, I feel like that would help it rise to the top. Had you, what was it that made you know that you could do the prompt that you were giving out? Oh, well, I didn't know that I was going to do it. I didn't know that I was actually going to do it. Oh. And, and, and you know, I, I am actually very interested as a songwriter, as a, person, as a person who's been writing songs since I was very, very young. And also, I view, for me, I, I, I want to I be, I want to write good songs. I want to be a better songwriter. And I have a long way to go. One of the things that I think about is I think about songs that need to be written, that want to be written. Those, those, those little words that are important need and, you know, want songs that have to be written. I, I, can, I can relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah, I love that. I feel like that's true in any relationship too. Like there's always things that you can <clears throat> say to fill the space, like practical things, like I'll meet you here. We're doing this on Friday, whatever. But there are other things that kind of like percolate. And then one day you say, you know, I really need to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you say you've been writing songs since you were very little. So that, that's normally the first question I wanted to ask you, you know, why and how did you begin songwriting? What <clears throat> held you? Begin. Well, I mean, you read the bio. I was, <laughs> I was, I was imitating my brother. It's as simple as that. Oh wow! You know, it all starts. I mean, it all begins with imitation, which is great. I'm all about imitation um, and archetype. Uh, but my brother, who's eleven, my oldest brother, who's eleven years older than me, um, was writing songs and playing music. You know, from uh, the, uh, as early as I can remember, <clears throat> with friends and stuff like that. So I, I remember thinking to myself, well, I can do that. And just kind of sitting down and playing the piano and writing a song about my cat and my grandmother and my vacation. And it was, and in, in our, in our, I feel very lucky. I've said this to a lot in a lot of interviews through the years, but I feel very lucky because in my house, it was okay to be creative. Yeah. My, my father was a journalist. My mother was a therapist and a yoga teacher and had a guru and you know there was all it kind of it was it was okay to be creative and try things and do things um you know even though it annoyed my father that I would watch tv and play the piano at the same time <laughs> um you know so it, it just started at a very early age and I went to a small private school and in in turn I was very excited about writing songs you know, my, my fourth grade teacher allowed me to do my book reports in song form and stuff like that. You oh, know? cool. Wow. So it was, it, I was lucky that it wasn't, it wasn't like something that I had to hit hide or anything, even though I was pretty, I was very shy, but it was, a, it came very naturally to me. Oh, that's so nice. That's so, yeah. I, I often wonder what it would be like to grow up with that being sort of normal, you know, like, Cause I did, yeah. not, I did not have that. <laughs> yeah, I got, was, yeah. I got like the kibosh at age four by, from a teacher who was like, would anyone like to share a song? So I shared a song I wrote, I've told the story before, but about like cotton candy and ballet. And she was like, um, could anyone please share a song? We all know. <laughs> oh, wow. And I was like, no more songwriting until age like 25. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, mean, but I feel like it is so natural. I mean, you have these uh, encouraging parents and you're imitating your older brother, but like, I mean, I feel like all kids, like I have a four-year-old and a six-year-old, they're always singing and narrating what they're doing. Yes. Friends are doing the same thing. So I think it's just a matter of whether you, you know, sort of just act like that's 
just what people do. You know, like I, I sometimes I struggle between whether to be like, that was so beautiful or whether to just like literally ignore it, you know, cause it's just part of their mm -hmm. process and I don't want to interrupt it. But, um, <clears throat> yes, I would love to go back to the, uh, finding the songs that need and want to be written. How do you, uh, how do you approach that? Making lists, you know, just allowing myself, uh, I mean, like, as I said, at the, I, I feel very lucky that I'm able to work as a facilitator. So I'm in a situation often. I mean, I, this summer, for instance, I, 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 was facil I facilitated at um, four or five different programs, oh. you know, being immersed for a week, all in that energy. So, you know, from asking those questions, making lists, working from, I, I'm a big work from a free write type of person and yeah. I also love co collaboration I'm a great collaborator I love working with other songwriters and you know getting ideas from others and getting into the flow that way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um allowing myself that time you know to go to that place of creativity and free flow you know that I think that that's probably the biggest challenge um as an artist uh who who is who wants to grow i mean i still i have i have such a long way to go and you know oh my gosh i mean i i really do. do i feel like i know but, and, and i'm, I'm like, excited yeah. about that it yeah. excites me but t being able to find the time and take the time in a life you know to yeah. really spend time with creativity working on my craft working on songwriting you know it's important to me because of my work, I'm able to do it, but, yeah. not, but, but I, I am often challenged by that. Yeah. So let, let me just highlight some of the stuff you said and then talk about that a little more. So I just want to say it because it's like gold and it's yeah. so great that you can ask yourself, what's the letter that needs to be written? Yeah. I feel like you'll know. I feel, I feel something rising up inside me just hearing the question um, and making lists. I'm assuming the lists are like, what are the songs that, Yes. Uh, that want to be written and you just start making a list. You can decide yeah. later which one you want to write. Okay. And then this making time, you're feeling like you're making, you love going to that creative zone and making that time. So how, how do you, how do you work with that? I, I wish I, like I could just like live there, but I'm like, yeah. oh. It's well, it's more challenging in life. Um, it, 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 there, there's a certain dedication. I mean, as an independent, and I know that you can relate to this, you know. Being, it, I've, I've always been independent. You know, I really have to carve out the time. I know that my best times, I do better, um, I do quite well during the morning, and I do quite well in the early evening. Mm. Um, so even if I allow myself an hour, um, I'm able also to, if I do walking, mm. it's, I, I can be creative. I am a swimmer. So ah. I do laps. So my mind, I actually can, my mind goes to a, into a, um, an interesting kind of zone around creativity as I do that. But I'm, what I'm trying to say is I think that there is, you have to be dedicated to showing up for a certain amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> I love, well, <laughs> and it's, it's challenging. It's challenging. <laughs> Believe me, you know, sometimes I'm like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to sit here for an hour and work on this song. I don't want right. to. Right. But then I, but then once I get going, it's, it's great. It's like getting down to the mat about anything, you know, yeah. Yeah. you have to be dedicated. It's not like fairy dust. You got to work at it. Well, I feel like it's so, it's so interesting because, well, movement has been coming up a lot. A lot of people have mentioned walking and you're, you're the first person to mention swimming. I, I love yeah. that. But um, yeah. I feel like it's interesting because on the one hand, it's almost like the creative process or writing songs is your friend because not only is it helping you process grief, it's also like getting you out exercising. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, Absolutely. It's like a, a whole life thing. And then, yes. you know, you're mentioning this other time that it's not all fair. You just need to sit down for an hour and I feel yeah. like there are those different, you know, phases. Like a couple days ago, I had this amazing kind of experience where I felt like I thought I was going to work on one song and then these other ideas just kept coming. And it just felt so good because I felt like I was receiving something or I was bathed in something. And then 
another aspect of my personality showed up and was like, what is this? Like, is this actually something or like, you know, and started <laughs> to try to manage things, you know, and then suddenly like the magic was gone. But I feel like that manager for me, I don't know, it can be helpful like in the editing phase, but if I let her in yeah. soon, she just makes it such a mess. Yeah. Absolutely. She's such yeah. a B-I-T-C-H. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So, anyway, I love that. What are um in you know in terms of making? I, so one of the things I think about, you know, you're you're facilitating all of these workshops, and so are you able to bring to bear the way you facilitate for others, facilitate for yourself? Like, and how do you do you do that? <laughs> well, it's like I said, it's time mostly allowing myself the time, finding the time, um, which is my biggest challenge. So uh, do I? Yes, I do. I do. Um, am I consistent? I would say that I, I'm, I'm consistent in that I allow myself to be in a creative zone at least, you know, four, four, four times a week, five times a week. And, oh, wow. and without, it's almost like meditation. Um, it doesn't have to be long, you know, a good yeah. meditation can be three minutes. <laughs> as, long as, as long as you're like really doing it. You yeah. Know? yeah. But, um, uh, um, and, and I have to say, you know, I, and I, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I spend a lot of time collaborating, um, which is a whole new way of, of being creative for me. And, and I enjoy that a lot. So does, does, that help you put, does, does that help you put in the time because you yes. need meeting with somebody? I do, I do well with others. Yeah. I'm good with relationship. Sometimes when I get too much in my own head, it can get a little weird. So, you know, um, I, I'm glad that this is a new it's not new, actually. I've been doing it for a long time. So there's that as well. Yeah. And, and frankly, I need it. I need, it's because of the way that I'm wired, um, allowing myself time to create and be creative. Even if I just sit down at the piano and extemporaneously play and come up with something. Yeah. Turn on my magic iPhone and then listen later and, you know, see what, see what happens. It's, 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 it makes me feel better. Yeah. It's, it, it makes me feel better. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I can, yeah, I feel like I get tense or tight and I don't really know that I am or I don't realize that I am and suddenly I'm like, oh, I haven't made anything in like seven yes. days or even just sat at the piano. But yeah. I love that, the collaboration piece. I, um, even when I don't collaborate, if I just, I don't know, I just, well, if I set a date with someone, like I'm going to play you this half a song. Right on Friday, you know what I mean? Then I'm like, yay, I get to see my friend. Yes. But then, we're, you know, I'll get, I'll get ready, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. For a lot of years, um, I did, I would do a, you know, have a song circle, a working song circle and get people to come over and, you know, not that it was about, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that into critique, even though, I mean, I, I, from my point of view is, you know, you find people who you trust and feel safe with, who you really want to talk to about songs and then critiquing is okay. But I'm not like into fixing people's songs or, I, you know, I, I have to be careful in that arena, but I do love being with other songwriters and seeing where people are at in their process. Cause I'm, I love process. I, I, the creative process is very exciting to me. It's, it's the most exciting part of being uh. in, of an artist for me. It's more exciting than performing making a song and seeing other people in their process and but I'm thinking about getting another one started you know I haven't done it in years and I haven't been part of other people's song circles in years but I was thinking about maybe starting a group just to get that have that ongoing the group energy thing yeah 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 absolutely so I feel like it's so it's so important and so here's what I want to know I feel like sometimes I may have mentioned this before we got on here, but like the, the, 
like when someone first asked me to teach songwriting, I was like, I don't know how to do that. You know, cause it was such a, I, I mean, I was doing it, but it was such an internal process. And I went back and kind of excavated, okay, like when did I have this breakthrough or when did I realize that I liked this? And I really concretely had to break it down in order to then try to recreate those experiences. But I would love to know like super two things. So okay. part one and part two, super concretely, like what are, some of the breakthroughs you've had um, either teaching or writing around like craft around like melody or around singing, like just really concrete things that you have learned, you know, over the past 10 years, first craft. And then second, like self-talk emotional and no, um, <laughs> things that you've learned like that work well in terms of your emotional state. Sorry, that was a lot. That's no, okay. That was a lot. So the the first part one is what? <laughs> the breakthroughs you've had around. Um, okay. I'll, I'll give an example. Like I have a song early on that I really like of mine. I love all the words, but like years later, I was like, oh, the whole melody is in like a four note range, you know, and, right. you know, but it okay. took me hearing that back, you know. Okay. So the break, the, probably my biggest breakthrough around craft mm -hmm. is that, um, is to simplify. Uh, I feel that I have composed um, hundreds of songs that are impossible. They're impossible. I listen to the songs and I'm like, who wrote that? And on the one hand, I think to myself, they're brilliant. They're, they're, but they're impossible. They're, they're linear, which is great. I mean, there are things about them that I like. They're, they're art songs. I mean, I love to write art songs. I, you know, something that goes all over the place. Uh, no real chorus, no real nothing. So one of the, I would say that the biggest breakthrough that I've had in the last 10 years is to simplify and to really uh, learn how to, um, to um, bring attention to melody and form. I fought this for year, years, Anne. I fought it for years. I was like, eh, there's more ways than one to skin a cat. Yeah, but nobody can remember your song, Sloan. <laughs> right? You know? So simplicity. And really, and really actually learning about form, learning about how to tumble something forward, learning about lifts and choruses, and then learning all the rules and then going ahead and breaking them. But I was so not into that. Mm -hmm. Right from the start, right from the start. And I still like to write meandering landscape pieces. I do. When I sit at the piano, I, it, mostly it's landscape. When I pick up an instrument like this, I, actually can, I can actually use a form. Mm. Um, yeah. The last, I mean, the, all the songs that I've been writing in the, la in, in, in the last, I would say, six years, much, they're, they're, they're simpler. I love that. Easier to remember. And people know them. <laughs> now they know them. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I'm not like trying to recreate everything and make everything really complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I love that. I love that. Well, and the thing is knowing the, knowing the rules and knowing how to lift up the melody and knowing how to simplify, you can always break it later, but at yeah. least you can also offer that. Yeah. But it's interesting because when, like when I really started to learn to listen to the songs that I really love, I learned a lot. About, I learned a lot of, more about maybe how to work with my own songwriting. Mm. I was pretty dedicated to being different, mm -hmm. which I don't. I try not to be that different. I want to be me, but right. Anyway, so then what was the second? Well, I, I love, so wait, so I feel like the, so the breakthrough actually happened in you listening back to your old songs and then in oh listening to the songs that you love of other people's mm -hmm. and then being like, what do I, what do I love about this and how can I simplify it? Super mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, I, I, that reminds me of this song I had uh, called mm -hmm. I Know This. I even put it on a record and it, but I would be out playing it live and it was a piano song. You know, it's like the kind of music that they play like at the massage parlor that's really sad. I always ask them to turn it off. But anyway, I was playing that music. And then I really liked the melody and I liked the words, but I noticed that people see, like, I, I, I write a lot of sad songs, but I feel like usually 
the intention is that they'll be uplifting or people can feel the emotion and then let it go or transcend it. But with this song, I felt like I was harming people. Like it was so sad that I would look at them after and be like, I think I hurt them. <laughs> so right. then I took that song and um, I played it for a friend of mine who's not even a musician. And he was like, I like this part. I like this part, which of course was the hooky part of the melody. I saved the hooky part of the melody. I saved most of the words. And then I made the song a ukulele song. And like <laughs> now it's the same message, but it's not right. harming anyone. Um, yes. Anyway. So, so okay. I love so, that. Yeah. Um, second part of the question breakthroughs you've had around like state of mind, like what has, has really oh. helped you in your writing, you know, cause I feel like to me that like, the internal dialogue is always going and it's so important. Uh, yeah, I, um, I would say the most succinct way for me to answer that would be the breakthrough around my state of mind um, to, to trust. There's, a, there's an instinct, and to trust the instinct. Um, and, and I know that, that it's hard for me to explain it, but to really, I know for me that when I'm in, I really have to trust, because I know when something's wrong. I might not know why in regard to songwriting. Right now I'm going through this. Right now I have, there's this great song. I love a song that I've, that I've been working on with my friend Roger Tomhave. And um, there's, there's just, there's something about it that, that I, that's not quite right. Mm -hmm. And I've been working on it for weeks trying to, to figure out what 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 it what it is, and I th I thought I knew, and then yesterday, and I've really been hanging in with it, and I've done a lot of rewriting and a lot of switching things around, and there's so much of it. It's a very simple song, <laughs> a lot of it I love, but kind of where it ends up, I'm I'm like that's not quite right. So really trusting that thing that I feel. Mm -hmm. And then hanging in there with it and being patient. Hmm. Because I'm a very impatient person. And my point of view, and not every songwriter has this point of view, but my point of view is to let it flow, even if you're, even if you're um, you know, just inserting words and having placeholders. But let it flow. You got the rest of your life to fix it. Hmm. And I actually even perform songs that are 85 percent where i know that there's something that i may want to fix but i um i also am going to trust that um i'm on the right track and i'm going to let this song continue to lead me towards you know what's going to happen next with it so wow. i know that, that sounds a little airy fairy no, but no. um i would say trust and patience Mm hmm trust and patience and also you're not hiding that song in the closet until it's i don't do that i that's play songs. really cool i perform songs i'm going to perform this song this weekend there's so much about it that i like except for the kind of the payoff in the chorus mm -hmm. and i sang it i recorded it and sang it three times yesterday and with the line keeping the line the way it is and there's a part of me, like I'm beginning to accept it, but I'm oh. hoping, I'm hoping that in my life that I will be able to get it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> I don't have it yet, but it's okay. Still a great song. I think that, tr that trust is so, is, is so important. And I feel like, yeah, I mean... And I don't, and who knows why? I mean, it's always a different reason, but I, like I have a song I started like five years ago when I was teaching at Interlock and, and it's still not done. I mean, it could be done. Like, it, I, it could be done. I played like various versions of, but I, there's something not right. And I, I don't know what it is yet. And I'm assuming at some point I'll find out, but I also feel like that's right. a muscle. You, the patience is something you develop when you've written a lot of songs and they've all come at different times. Like you start to be like, okay, 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, and then maybe like another song will come and you'll be like, Oh, this, this one is right. Right. So I can wait for that other yeah. one. Right. Not get too pissed. Right. <laughs> um, I it takes a lot of patience and yeah, it takes a lot of patience. And also, yes. So I would say that that's probably, and the trust thing, you know, trusting, you know, trusting me, trusting the process, trusting the song, you know, there, there's the, the trust aspect is, is pretty, you know, it's, it's a big aspect. Right. And, and if you're cultivating that trust, you'll also be happier. Mm -hmm. Cause you don't have to go through these, you know, huge highs and lows dramatic of like, ah, you know, cause you're like, Oh, this is just yeah. part of it. Yeah. No, I'm, I, it's, I don't, I have, I'm my angst around songwriting has diminished greatly. Oh, good. <laughs> it really has. That's so nice. I'm like, well, you know, I think that's pretty good. Let's, <laughs> let's start there, you know, and then, and then it could get even better. I mean, I, not all songwriters do this, you know, I'll mess with things, even if I've been performing with them, yeah. you know, cause often in performance, since I perform, I get a lot of information about the songs on stage. So often, you know, I'll fix something or I'll change a feel or I'll, you know, I, I, I get information that I might not necessarily have. Yeah. It's a very important part of my process. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm 100% with you. I feel like if I'm not sure if a song is landing, I just perform it live and I know immediately what's wrong because I'll feel yeah. uncomfortable when I sing a certain line. I'll be like, right. that isn't it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yay. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I love like minds. <laughs> yeah. It's so fun. Um, so I forget we're recording this. Okay. So do you... <laughs> do you have um another song you'd like to tell us the story of how it came to be and play it <sighs> maybe um let's see well i mean i'm back to this ukulele thing uh it's <clears throat> it's, it's gonna be high um you know it makes me kind of um what's the word Okay. <clears throat> what does your love look like today? So that's a question that I ask. That's a prompt. What 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 color is your love? Mm. Right. What does your love look like today? A work in progress, come what may. My view from here in every hue includes a touch of missing you. Still, life without you here. Still life without you near Spring rain is falling from the sky The old trees in the backyard smile Our time on earth is getting short can't help myself for wanting more still life without you here. Still life without you near. Apple in the moonlight, pencil on the table, dishes in the bathroom sink. Laundry in the basket, tulip in the vase. Listen to the wind chimes sing. Still life without you here. Still life without you near. You're wrong, and I know I can't hide. 
from what I feel so deep inside. The risk I take in loving you is worth the ache my heart is going through. Still, my without you here. Still, life without you near. Still, life without you here. Still, life without you. Oh. So, that, <laughs> I love it. I can't believe I just did that. That's that's a that's a little song that I wrote about um, having a boyfriend. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I'm such a fan. <laughs> I I love the. Um, you did something in that song. I just want to point out. You know, sometimes um, with the songwriters that I meet, we talk about changing up the melodic uh, rhythm. You know, and you. Oh, and also where it is, or whether it's high or low. And I love that part, like apple on the table, where you go really low and you totally change up the feel. So the catchy. The bridge. The bridge. So <laughs> so catchy. I wanted it to come back. I wanted it to be a double bridge song. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever those are called. Um, that was really fun. Yeah. Thank I, you. You know, I, I'm very shy about playing i i don't really play an instrument and sing on stage that much i'm pretty pretty shy it's interesting for a person who used to just play the piano and sing for years and now i'm how many years later 27 years later i'm so um uh spoiled you know to work with steve murphy you know mm -hmm. who's been so great over the years yeah, I didn't know it must be nice. I mean, I, I've seen you sing and you just stand at the mic and it's very powerful. So um, it, it works, you know, mm -hmm. and this works too. But it's I good. That I, you know, thank you for listening to my. I feel like there's no correlation between how nervous <laughs> someone is and what it's going to sound like. And you just proved that because it was gorgeous. Oh, no. um, oh, you're a girl. You're so done. for those of you listening who haven't been to Sloan's website, please go to sloanwainwright.com and you can hear, she's got a little radio there. I was spent the morning listening to it and ever just, I just want to say ever since the first time I heard you sing, I think I was living in New Haven at the time. I just felt like you were giving me like a big hug. I felt so like rooted and I just always loved your voice and your music. And thanks for sharing your wisdom with us today. Thank you, Lynn. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. If you had one piece of advice to give songwriters, um, parting advice, what would it be? Slow and steady wins the race. Ah. Nice. I like it. Perfect. <laughs> my, my mom, my mom would have said that. Yeah. Hang in there. Hang in there. Thank you, Sloan. Thanks. Love. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us. If you know someone who would enjoy or benefit from this podcast, please share it with them. Thanks so much. Much love.